How you doing? Was this too quick a transition? You know what I mean? Like nine, ten black dudes in a row and then like the whitest man on the planet. I'll let your eyes adjust. I was watching uh, George Bush today, man. I don't be a dick or anything, but could that guy like rehearse before he gives a speech? You know what I mean? Just say, just say it like, like a couple of times. How awful was he during that hurricane? He just walking out, man. He's just like winging it. Walking out on the White House lawn, there's like sun in his eyes. He's just out there like, ah, ah, there was a hurricane. Ah, people are wet. Ah, people don't like being wet unless they're swimming uh, in, a, in a pool. He sounded like a little kid giving a book report who like didn't read the book. He's just up there making up shit like, ah, uh, there was a dog. And I uh, bit somebody, and, and they didn't like it. <laughs> Every night, I gotta watch that idiot on the news, or they're doing stories about how fat kids are getting. You see that? Every night, every night, they're talking about kids are obese now. Not fat kids, not chubby, they're obese. Like bedridden. <laughs> like, like just laying there, like, I, ha I had my first heart attack when I was four. <laughs> I was riding on my big wheel. I couldn't feel my left side. I began to, I began to pass out my head. I... <laughs> Yo, I don't want to be a dick, but how do you get that fat that quick? I can see you're 30, 40 years old. You went to McDonald's for 20 years. You got a little gut going, but you're five years old. There's no excuse for that shit. I'm telling you, man, that's the parents' fault. You know, stop feeding him. He doesn't have any money. You know, seriously. He can't go get a job so he can go buy more food. He's got to eat whatever you give him. Just put a plate of seaweed right in front of him. Go ahead, eat it. I don't want to eat it. Good, go to bed. Post your options. I own you until you're 18. Do some jumping jacks. No, but his parents are ridiculous. They act like they have no control. They're like, well, I don't know what to do. I mean, I try to make him eat a salad, but he didn't want to eat it. He was like, no, I want a cupcake. I said, you can't have it. But then he sat on my chest and I, I couldn't breathe. And I just, I just wanted to get up after a while. People, you need tough love at that moment. If your kid is obese and he's still asking for cake, you gotta be like, no, you little shit. You're eating carrots and celery until I can pick you up again. This is ridiculous. You got a goddamn hernia on your birthday. I know, look, I know that seems harsh to be making fun of obese kids. I'll tell you why I'm doing it. They don't really exist. At least to the level that they're saying. They're saying it's an epidemic. You know, which means when I leave the theater tonight, I should have like difficulty getting to my car because of all these fat fucking kids out there like, Jesus Christ, they're everywhere. They're like Loki. No means no, that's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no, all right? But no, stop it, what are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad. Stop it. No. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me. So I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people. Right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you're just sitting there like, she didn't fucking say it like that! She didn't say it like that! Like, I was afraid of my dad when I was growing up, you know? Anybody have a dad like that? You're just afraid of him? You know, not like those sitcom dads, they come home, the kids are like hugging their legs. My dad pulled in the driveway, me and my brother's freaked, like, fucking dad's home! <laughs> Shut off the TV, try to hide. Dude, if I stand like this, do I look like a lamp? He won't see me, right? Can I just fucking chill out here? He wasn't understanding. When you fucked up, he told you. 
You didn't sit down while we're gonna work it out. We'll just, you know, I still love you. We love you. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're an idiot. Weren't you even paying attention? Thou oh, bullshit. <laughs> Christ, you're just like your mother. You're fucking out to lunch. <laughs> that was my dad. No matter what he was bitching about, somehow he would make it about my mother. Would have nothing to do with it nothing to do with her. He could somehow find a connection and spin it back. He'd have said, oh, is it raining out? Oh, for Christ's sake, I don't need this shit. Christ, it's the same goddamn thing with your mother. That woman is a fucking cloud hanging over my life. Anytime you got an idea, Christ, she shits all over it. No, he was hilarious. He used to work all the time, so he didn't really have like any friends or anything. So he used to talk to me when I was eight years old, like I was a fucking bartender. <laughs> Just dumping all this shit on me. Like playing in the sandbox, he'd be coming up there. I'll tell you, I don't know what the fuck I ever got married for. I'll tell you, man, I'm, I'm going to get the fuck out. I swear to God, one of these days when I get in the car, I'm going to fucking drive out of here. Your mother's a bitch, Philly. Do you realize that? The woman is a fucking bitch. Is that too real for you guys? You fucking know what I'm talking about. This is how screwed up my country is right now. Do you, you know that you know Brian Cranston, right? That dude did a movie. He played a quadriplegic, and people gave him shit. <laughs> Being like, why is there an able-bodied person playing a quadriplegic? It's like it's because it's called acting. You dumb fuck. See, if he was a quadriplegic playing a quadriplegic, that's not acting. <laughs> that's just fucking laying there saying shit that someone else wrote. So tell us, what, what did you do to prepare for the role? Well, I dove head first into the shallow end of a pool when I was 23. I feel like I've been preparing for this role for my whole life. Right, what is up next for you? Oh, uh, well, they're gonna do a reboot of Top Gun. Uh, I'm gonna fly it with my plug. And uh, the co pilot's gonna be transgendered. So everybody will be happy. She won't die. Her discarded dick will block her head from the canopy. There'll be a gender neutral bathroom on the plane. How fucking dumb is that? That's literally like watching a movie. Why didn't you have a murderer play a murderer? And how come the guy he shot, I saw him in another movie? I mean, what the fuck is going on? I wake up a mess, I've been smoking cigarettes And I bet you couldn't guess, I've been dreaming of you The minute I'm impressed, but I only a success But I wish I saw it less, cause I still want you Get married, you know I was making that, I'll definitely get married someday, you know. I, I, you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not like compatible with them. You know what I mean? <laughs> you ever just feel that? Like women have like too much energy for me. You know what I mean? Like you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day. They're like, oh my God, let's go fill it up with shit. <laughs> no, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your t-shirts? <laughs> this is the worst one. Ever get this one? You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside you're like, fucking no! But you can't say that, right? You gotta keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you're thinking. Now nah, you're thinking. Then we can sit around and listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. Like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus. I thought it was pesto. Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? It's horrendous. I'm trying to learn to pick my battles when I date girls. I usually argue with women all the time, man. I'm stupid like that. 
you know? Like I dated this girl one time, she was like really into like women's issues. So we used to always have these dumbass arguments. Like one time she came up to me, she goes, okay, explain this to me, Bill. Why does a guy make more an hour to do the exact same job, huh? Hmm? Hmm? I go, I'll tell you why. Because in the unlikely event that we're both on a Titanic and it starts to sink, for some fucked up reason, you get to leave with the kids and I have to stay. <laughs> yeah, that's why I get the dollar more an hour. Well, think about it. If there's a house fire, it's always women and children first. I got to stand there with like the back of my shirt on fire going, let's go people, let's go, let's go. So that's how I look at it. No, it's a dollar an hour surcharge. That if something fucked up happens, either I can't leave or I got to like get in the way of it to give you a head start. Like rabbit dog, run honey. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. You hear a bump in the night, I gotta go check it out. Like, yes, he does have a knife. <laughs> Anytime there's a hostage situation, who do they negotiate for first? Well, at least let the women and children go. Well, what about me? <laughs> Bullets hurt me too. Why the fuck do I gotta stay in the vault? No, that's my point, man. Where are all the feminists in those situations? You know what I mean? You can't find them. There are no feminists in a house fire. That's a, that's a guarantee. You could take the most hardcore feminist, some chick right in your face, like, he's shoving a sick time of a bitch. Little short, little haircut, the whole nine yards, right? <laughs> Second those flames break out, she's gonna twist those little hairs into pigtails. No, I'm just a girl. I wanna go play jump rope. And leave you standing in a burning house like you're not flammable. You know, but I'm not, I'm not a dick, though. I'm not, I'm not saying I think a woman should make a doll less an hour to do the same job. All I'm saying is if you're going to make what I make when the boat sinks, you better be standing right there next to me, listen to that guy play the cello. <laughs> then you get the corner office. You get all the benefits or whatever. Actually, nerd Jesus died in the last year, right? Steve Jobs. Yeah, he died, right? I know, I know, a lot of nerds here tonight. I know, you're sad. I didn't get it. I didn't get the big deal they made about that guy. When he died, they were like, he changed the world. That was insane. He changed the world. The world was one way, and then Steve Jobs came, and it was another. What did he do? Somebody, for the love of God, what the fuck did that guy do? What did he do? He told other people what to invent? I want my entire music collection in that phone. Get on it! Right? And then these poor, nameless, faceless scientists got to go in a back room and figure it out. How the fuck are we going to get all of this into this? I mean... What year does this guy think this is? This is crazy. This is like Buck Rogers. Dude, my kid has a birthday in like 11 months. Steve Jobs just walking by. I don't hear any thinking going on in there. Just strutting around the office, eating some pretentious fruit like a pear. Right? Just throwing out ideas. There's another one. There's another one I just came up with on the way to work. I was reading a magazine the other day, turning pages, you know? I like to turn pages on a screen that aren't even there. Yeah, wrap your fucking heads around that, guys! See you in eight years! Where you going, Michael? Big, little, big, little, get on it! Right? And all these people slave away to make his vision come true. And then they have the big nerd fest, right? down there Comic-Con and all their nerd mecca. They are all showing up with their acne and their Hulk shirts limping into the arena, right? Does Steve Jobs go out with a whole chorus line of scientists? No, he goes out there by himself. Sneakers and no belt like it was no biggie, right? <laughs> like, he's, like he's Tesla. Tapping in the atmosphere. I know, this is always uncomfortable. I know, you bought into it, right? 
That whole advertising, the way they aligned themselves with some of the greatest people of all time. Jesus, Gandhi, me. <laughs> Remember that? Muhammad Ali, John Lennon, this guy. <laughs> How the fuck was that dude like any of them? Gandhi didn't have a sweatshop. <laughs> nah, he didn't have people leaping to their deaths only to get, catch a net and get ricocheted back through the window to have to put together yet another iPad. John Lennon didn't have children in his basement pressing those fucking albums. I know, I know. New phone can't fit the old charger. This is your hero? This is the guy? This is what all the silence is about? New phone can't fit the old charger, so then you gotta throw it out, ends up in the ocean around some octopus's neck. Do you realize how much sea life is ecstatic that that man is no longer walking the earth? <laughs> That's where it all ends up, you know. It doesn't go in a landfill, ends up in the ocean. You realize that? I hate people who say I don't pollute. I don't pollute. Yeah, you do. You use shit and you throw it out. What, you think because you put it in like a basket, it just poof, disappears? <laughs> Everything you ever used is somewhere. You ever think about that? Remember that flannel shirt you bought back in the day when you got into Pearl Jam? That's out there somewhere. Probably on some porpoise's face, tr trying to get it off. Stupid little flippers. All the fads. You remember rollerblading? Remember that? Everybody had them. We set up cones, we did little tricks, right? One little homophobic joke killed that entire fad. What's the hardest thing about rollerblading? Yeah, telling your parents you're gay. <laughs> Full-grown adults, dude, I'm not gay. I don't have the cooties. These mean I suck dick. And they just threw them out. <laughs> they end up in the ocean. They're made out of plastic. They can't biodegrade. They just break down to little cubes. Fish are breathing them in. Six months later, you're going out, you're getting sushi. You think you're being healthy. You're eating your old rollerblades. <laughs> all right, I'm out of time. You guys are great. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. That's too fucking weird to give out all that information. Oh, you don't uh, even want to say really? how many because you're afraid that it will yeah, compromise your privacy. Yeah, by all means, keep talking privacy. about it. Is there anybody you can <laughs> cut this out? I'm honest, dude. Like, Seriously? Yeah, no, dude. I, yeah, there's fucking lunatics out there. Okay. Well, Off the air. Off the air, I'll tell you. <laughs> all right. Jeez. <laughs> I love how surprised he is. Jeez, well, you can actually, mention the amount. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> crazy people. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I don't know why that took out so <laughs> flat. You got Come one on. question to ask Don Rickles. Uh, who killed Kennedy? <laughs> <laughs> you think he knows? Well, yeah. Well, he hung out with Sinatra. I figure <laughs> six degrees of separation. He probably knows. Yeah. Why not? Where's well, Jimmy Hoffa? I'd ask him one of those. You know, you know, you yeah. ask him three mob questions. One of them, he's got the answer to. You don't have any kids. No, I don't. And I don't like the way you said that. Like, this is very... <laughs> you don't have any kids. No, I don't have any kids. I'm going to adopt. <laughs> That's nice. I'm going to rescue a couple of the children that work till four in the morning <laughs> to put this. They make them catch it when it rains. <laughs> okay, and you have to stand out there <laughs> and, until it's full. And if it doesn't rain that day, you actually get beaten and they dock your pay because you didn't do the rain dance right. And then we sit here and we drink this shit and we wonder why China hates us. When did you start shaving your head? It looks good. Uh, when did I start shaving? Well, I shaved it later on my first, my first special. I had it shaved. Really? I didn't? Yeah. When I saw you in New York well, I'm for glad, the Patrice I'm glad thing. you liked it. I, I see I you like losing the roof there in the back. Yeah, You'll be right bit, there with me. Bit. I'll be we'll, do a, we'll do a buddy cop <laughs> show. Exactly. All right, two balding old guys <laughs> exactly. going after some hairy criminal. Where did you play the cop on uh, Breaking Bad? Cop Breaking like Bad. Things. I wasn't Breaking a cop Bad. in Breaking Bad. And I had my head shaved on my first special. You didn't do your research. You were Where? so busy worried about this matching this, and now Where look were you at a you. Cop? Huh? What You're show were you to a get cop? Sweat on? on your upper I know, lip. Because I'm nervous. Because I'm fucking this up. Are you from Southie? No. That's Wait. that's a Goodwill Hunting question that I've answered <laughs> for 15 years. Ever since that movie came out. Do you, are you good at math? Do you like apples? Oh, from flannel underscore toilet semicolon um when is do you think moonshine will make it make their big comeback well moon shoes i i can't read by the way when is do you think moon shoes will make their big comeback 
What are, what are mom's shoes? It's like trampolines on your feet. You see, like you're bouncing around like you're on the moon. I didn't know that they ever had them. <laughs> <laughs> Flannel toilet. I had no idea. Uh, so, but if I had to guess, when when did they come up? <laughs> I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Does anybody fucking know? Yeah. Jesus Christ. Can women be funny? Will you guys just fucking grow up and just sit down and write your own horse shit and come up with it? Start your own fucking show. Have your own award show. Quit waiting around for other people to do shit for you. That's the fucking problem. If you guys had your own big club and I was standing outside of it, you'd never fucking let me in. I'd start my own shit. You guys got to start your own shit. You got brains in there, right? Uh, I, yes, absolutely. So write your own shit and quit your fucking whining. We're all eating a giant shit sandwich out here. Nobody cares. I don't care. Absolutely, but I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a web person. The fuck up! Uh, I, it has no makes no yeah. difference whether you got a dick or a twat. All right, <laughs> just do what the fuck you want to do, and hopefully people respond to it. But this fucking horseshit of quotas and all of this crap just become undeniable. Well, when was the last time you went on stage and you killed so hard the person after you bombed? If you're fucking doing that on a regular basis, people are gonna notice regardless of what you have between your legs. Uh, I don't know how to say it. How would you say that? Obia man. Obia man. Oh, I see. O B E A H. God, I'm stupid. Um, <clears throat> what is your favorite Pokemon and Pixar? I don't know. Too old for that. <laughs> I have no idea what that is. That's that creepy little yellow thing. Those eyes. <laughs> this is Southside Steve, and this is Southside Steve TV, and this is Bill Burr. That's your question? I'm just saying who you are. Oh, yeah, all right. I don't like you creep me out with that big microphone and that country western shirt. Oh, no, this isn't country western. It's like it's hip now to oh, wear this. Okay. This is my nightclub look. Yeah, okay. come on. All right. <laughs> you're, you're uh, what is this? Rock 100.5. Mm -hmm. This is the worst interview I've ever done. <laughs> and he's wearing Stetson cologne or something. It's just really. Over, overpowering. How you doing? You know what he looks like? He looks like the first guy who gets his ass kicked in a Steven Seagal movie. <laughs> no. The background guy behind the, uh, the, the big kingpin. Why don't you handle this? <laughs> I'm a huge fan of hockey. I love it. And I love that people don't get it down in the States. I love it. I love it. Why do they make, why do they let them fight? I can't see the puck. It's like music to my ears. <laughs> it's like, good, yeah, get out of here. You, Let's just get out of here. Let me, let me, let me watch it in it's, peace. It's, do you remember when they lit up the puck for a few years on, on TV? News, yeah. That was you guys. Do you know, no, but the, but the NHL. Well, no, no, wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Time out. No, time, well. out. time out. Time out. The NHL is you guys too, so all the owners had to agree with that, and you all had to be like, "We gotta, we gotta like expand this thing." We thought we'd funnel money into Canada and keep it here, but you guys took it over, like you tend to do. But well, I'm not going to apologize no, for that. No, no, no. You're big on the yeah. I mean, that's just business, dude. You're acting like we came and knocked you on the head. You know what we're about? I yeah. We wait. Wait a minute. Oh yeah. Wait a second, <laughs> fellow white person, <laughs> not native. To this country? How did you guys get this up here? Did the Native Americans go, oh, well, we like these white guys. You can have all that land. <laughs> Jesus Christ. No, I, oh, I get it. Your shit smells like maple syrup up here. <laughs> is that what you're telling me? All right. Yeah. I'll go with it. You know, I was reading a little bit about you, and it says that you have a tendency to kind of go with your first thought. Yeah. Because reading makes you sleepy. That's right. <laughs> And my first thought is this is the best week to be here, the week before the Super Bowl. That is so true. Before all the whores fly in, uh -huh. you know? Yeah. But just want to get out. Wow. <laughs> just want to get out of here before that. What is true? This is like the Oscars uh, for oh. prostitutes. Okay, all right. This well, entire week. Let's remember, we're G-rated here. <laughs> is, is there any specific preparing that you do when you do an urban room, or you just do your regular material? Yeah, I rent car wash, <laughs> and I watch... <laughs> No, it was, uh... <laughs> soul glow. <laughs> yeah, soul glow, I watch that. I uh, make sure I get buy a couple of Red Fox albums. I start talking like this when I get on, when I get on stage. You're at your girlfriend's sister's house. Sister just had a baby. Cute little baby, you know, three, four months old, you know, when they're just a blob of squishiness. Very cute. Right. Comes over, hands you the baby. You're sitting in the living room on the armchair. You're holding the baby up. Baby keeps putting his little feet right on your crotch. <laughs> Wiggling around his soft little feet. Pushing, stomping like grapes. Right. You start to feel 
a natural physiological response to that. Yet for some reason I don't move the baby. I just let it continue to step on my junk. But In this situation, oh, yes. Yeah. Okay, absolutely. So now. Makes total sense. In talk your way out of it, everything makes sense. Okay. So now you're, you're at, I'm going to call three quarters mass. The sister comes over to grab the baby because it started to cry. I'm wearing sweatpants. You got sweatpants on. Sister picks up the baby, the mother, your girl, her, the sister, all look down. They see it. Talk your way out of it. I mean, what was I supposed to do? It was stepping on my dick. So I supposed to throw it on the floor? I mean, it's a fucking baby. It's over here like it's trying to make wine on my cock and balls. You know? You fucking hold it. See what happens to your dick. Happy holidays. <laughs> there you go. I'm out of it. Happy you just, holidays. <laughs> just, just go with honesty. This game's easy. So your Christian background is is part of the the show. Yes, and I episodes. wanted to talk to you about Jesus after this. Well, I, <laughs> not, the only reason why I bring it up is some people thought maybe you went a little too far. You know, as far you, as what? Well, they thought that maybe you were being disrespectful to the Christian religion. Who did? So, I'm telling you, you need to Google. <laughs> oh, good lord! So that, did that, you that, feel that, you were being something. disrespectful, or just you you were just having fun with some of the crucifixes and stuff like that? I don't even know what you, I mean, we did maybe two jokes was, about that. Yeah, exactly. Don't you think the Catholic Church went a little too far? Yeah. <laughs> More so than my cartoon. All right, listen. A couple of jokes. I know this is a morning show. You can't bring up all those crimes. You know what? Technically. They just, they just sort of kept moving them around. You know, like those killer whales at SeaWorld. After it kills a trainer, they'll then move it up to Seattle. They don't give them their background. All right, I'm not totally following, <laughs> but uh, I don't think you know I want to. You know what I'm to. talking about? It's a morning show. I understand. Like, that. Thank you I came positive. on. That kid positive. was missed the graduation, and then, then the, it was a feel-good story. It was a feel-good, and we want to leave. If you want to feel good about America, you watch the morning shows. You don't watch this, you know. It, and watch, we were joking earlier. If that kid's story about the graduation was late night, that would have been a whole different story. What do you think? He's still missing. We can't <laughs> find him. All we found was his hat. But you watch in the morning. It's great. It all worked out. He got his own personal graduation. Like, I was in such a great mood. Look how <laughs> yellow this couch is. It's like the sun. <laughs> Let's see how you are a major conspiracy theorist. I'm a realist, though. Yes. Conspiracy theory has gotten a bad name where now it's, it's, it's become synonymous with, like, moronic thought. Like, if you're into conspiracy theory, if you think, like, the bankers need to be stopped, then you also think the moon is made out of cheese. <laughs> and you think that there's shape shift shifters and, like, lizard people. You know, they just try to knock it down. It's like, this country started with a conspiracy. That's how it came. We won, <laughs> so they're considered heroes and rebels, you yeah. know, uh, whatever, what Re revolutionaries, but yeah. if they lost, they would be hanged for, conspi for yeah. conspiring. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not like it spontaneously happened. Yeah. Like all of a sudden, everybody just picked up a gun and started shooting at the British. You know, they sat around. <laughs> they, said they planned they it out. They planned it out. Yeah. I'm kind of getting tired of these people. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. When you said we won, I'm like, did we really win? But I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. Now, oh, is that that African-American thing? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> hey, what's going on, you old? What's going on, you old sons of bitches? Turn up your hearing aid. You're watching the old fart channel. What do you think about uh, population, world population? It's completely out of control. Well, I, what about I, I, be fruitful and multiply? I think we did that. <laughs> I think we I think we achieved that goal, and it's time to move on to something else. I mean, it's just going to get worse and worse and worse. Like, uh, I think we need to kind of curb the babies for a minute, <laughs> let some older people die off, you know, and uh, I don't know. I think like a good number is about, I don't know, about 500 million. Oh, really? Six, let the oceans come back. Yeah, but how do you choose? Give people some space But you're, again. Not, you're, you're not talking about death panels, you're just talking about attrition. Yeah, just, you know. Birth control then. Birth control, old people die, somebody falls off a ladder. Right. You gradually, you know, you taper it off. Here's you? what I think, maybe get rid of seatbelts. I mean, there's some things we could do to move things no, just along. get rid of medicine. Get rid of medicine. Yeah, all these diseases we're trying to stop is nature actually keeping us in check, but we can contemplate, like, love and, and uh, uh, loss and our own mortality. So we think these diseases are bad. They are bad, they, but animals get them all the time, and it keeps them in check, and we stopped get, all of that get shit. Get rid of medicine. Get rid of medicine. Get rid of Live a hospital. healthy life. 
Eat well, get rid of Dude, pesticides. If it wasn't for modern medicine, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now. I should not be here. I had a ruptured appendix in 1980. I should have died under a stack of wool blankets on a prairie, but I did. Eat a green jello? Yeah, no, here I am. Just walking around, taking up space, driving a car, <laughs> polluting a river in my own way, adding my hole to the ozone layer. I mean. All right, so judging by most of your silence, I will do this math for you. Come on. Let's have a little empathy here. Put yourself in a lesbian's shoes. All right? Who do lesbians date? Women. Who do they do? Who do, who do they do? They move in with women. Who do they get in relationships with? Women. Who do they eventually marry? Women. And I was thinking, like, oh my God, I did that. I know what the fuck that's like. I know what it's like to live with one of those fucking things. I know exactly what that's. It's hopeless. Trying to make them happy. Hey, I bought you the shiny thing. Did I do it right? Huh? Trying to get them to take responsibility for their actions. Not gonna happen. The best you're gonna get is I'm sorry, but. I know what it's like to be winning a fucking argument. You're winning, you're winning, you're winning. And then they turn it around. They're crying. You're apologizing. You're thinking, what the fuck just happened? How am I losing this shit? I had you on the ropes. You feel so dumb. You got to go for a walk. And you're just thinking, how did I lose again? How did I lose again? And then you figure it out. It makes you feel stupid. And then you see some bald idiot with a giant orange mustache. And you're like, you know what? Why don't you take some of that shit? You take some of that fucking anger. Yeah. <laughs> I feel so stupid that I got mad at that woman. I shouldn't have gotten mad at her. I should have bought her a beer. I just listened to her troubles and had empathy. Be like, that's yeah, not your fault. You married a woman. I did it too. You're not going to win. There's no winning this. Yeah. I'm telling you, if you don't believe me, do a little people watching. Take a look at the look of the average lesbian's face. All right? I don't mean a lesbian in her 20s. She's got a whole life ahead of her. She's got Christmas in her eyes, right? I mean a lesbian about 35, 36, starting to settle into what the deal's going to be, right? And then look across the bar, find a married guy about the same age. Look at the look on his face. Look at the look on her face. Go back to his face. It's the same fucking look. Yeah. And then look at gay guys. Some of the happiest people I've ever met in my life. They're almost too happy. It's like, hey, how's it going? They're like, hi! Almost floating across the room with that lack of estrogen just yanking down your fucking dreams. Now, now look, it might be a front. I'm not saying all gay guys are just blissfully happy, but it's looking like a pretty good time to me. Dude, they're some of the most positive people I've ever met in my life. Any idea you have, they support it. They're just like, yes, yes, queen, yes! You're fierce, you can do it! Lesbians are up at the bar like a bunch of jaded cops. That's all fucking bullshit. What the fuck was I thinking? You hauling after 10 days, moving in? What the fuck was I thinking? She's crazy! No, I'm telling you, I think married men and lesbians need to start hanging out more. And we gotta put our heads together and try to solve our common problem, the women in our lives, so we can somehow attain the perceived happiness of the average gay dude out there. Yeah. So, if you believe in that shit, I'll give you some advice. If you're gonna expand your fucking world of friends, I'll give you some advice. You can't just hang out with any lesbian. All right? You gotta make sure you're hanging out with the dude in the relationship, right? And by dude, I'm not saying she's manly. I'm not being ignorant. By dude, I just mean she's the one that gets blamed for most of the shit, right? Because no relationship is balanced. Somebody is getting away with more. Somebody's drafting behind the other. It's like a bike race. Somebody else is taking the fucking weather in the face. Da -da 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 -da, right? Somebody else is fucking right behind. Oh, yeah, it really is wet. Just kind of hiding under your fucking poncho. Male, female, 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 they, they, whatever the fuck it is you're into. Every relationship, there's the person that does the dishes and the person that lets them soak, right? <laughs> they don't let them soak. They know you're going to do them. They're just waiting you out. And after a while, you can't fucking take it anymore. They just sit there. You got to go out and you start doing it. And then what do they do? They sit in the other room and they wait like they don't know what you're doing. And they wait till they hear pots and pans. And that's when the show starts. That's when they come running in like, what? Oh, I was going to do those. What? Oh. And you're like, no, you weren't.
They've been sitting here for eight hours. I got my hands in room temperature water with scrambled eggs floating around. Don't gaslight me. You're a fucking animal. You were raised by animals. Get out of my sight. Don't yell at me. Right? Yes. Every relationship has the person that will take the trash bag out of the trash barrel and do a little wuk -wuk 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 -wuk, tie it off and then leave it slumped against the counter like it took two behind the ear and a mob hit. Just... And then there's the person that actually picks it up and takes it out to the curb at night and puts it in the trash can, right? My wife's hilarious, man. I love her, but she's got some of the worst excuses ever. I'm like, why don't you ever take out the trash? She goes, I would, I'm just afraid of coyotes. I'm afraid of the coyotes. It's like, so am I. So am I. They're rabbit dogs. They, they hunt in packs of twos and threes. You don't do it because you don't want to do it because you know I'm going to do it. Just get the fuck away from me, please. No, I'm telling you. So anyway, I know I said a lot of divisive shit here tonight. So before I get out of here, before I get out of here, I, I want to... Let's bring the room together. It's a very divisive time. Everyone wants to feel safe. Let's bring them to a nice, normal, mainstream topic so everybody can drive home happy. No fights, all right? Sound good? All right, great. Let's talk abortion. There you go. <laughs> everybody has an opinion. It's my body, it's my right. Well, then fucking drive to Arkansas, bitch. Right? Everybody has an opinion. As do I have a really weird take on abortion. I'm gonna tell you that right from the get-go, okay? I'm 100% pro-choice, always have been. It's a, ladies, I said it was weird, for the love of God. Stop getting in the trunk of the car. Just wait to the end. You're supposed to vent me first. <laughs> Woo! Fucking feet out the sunroof. I said I had a weird take. Pro-choice always makes sense to me because I don't like people telling me what to do. And I always just like, it's your body. Who the fuck am I to tell you what to do with your body? So that always made sense, all right? However, I still think you're killing a baby. See? That's where it gets weird. Like, I sit on the fence and the whole thing makes sense to me. Whatever anybody's saying, like, don't tell me what to do. It's my body, my choice. That's right, man. She's right. Leave her the hell alone. Oh, right, you're killing a baby. Well, I mean, there is that. You know? I mean, you know, if we're going to be honest, that is the whole purpose of the procedure. You know, you're not going in there because you got an earache. You're going in there because you're like, I got a baby in me. Get the fuck out of here. Right? You walk in with the baby. You come out without one. What happened to the baby? Right? Something fucking happened. So... Pro-choice people are like, well, it's not a life yet. It's not a baby yet. If you do, I don't know what they say. Before you do it the first Thursday or the last Tuesday and you spin around one time, they dance between the rain trucks. It's not a baby yet. That's what they say, which may or may not be true. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. But I'll tell you, my gut tells me that doesn't make sense. It's not a baby yet. That would be like if I was making a cake and I poured some batter in a pan and I put it in the oven, and then five minutes later, you came by and you grabbed the pan, you threw it across the floor. And I went, what the fuck? He just ruined my birthday cake. And then you were like, well, that wasn't a cake yet. It's like, well, it would have been. If you didn't do what you just did, there would have been a cake in 50 minutes. Something happened to that cake, you cake murderer, son of a bitch. Right? Now, before all you pro-life people get excited, I think it's great you're killing your babies. It's fantastic. Help Mother Nature out. There's too many of us. It's been 130 degrees out. Animals are going extinct. There's plastic in the fucking ocean. We don't need any more fucking people. And especially, you know, if you're honest with yourself, have you done anything great with your life? <laughs> Is the person you're banging doing anything great? The answer to both of those questions is no. What are the odds you're gonna make a great person? I'm not saying you're gonna make a bad person, you're just gonna make another person that doesn't go when the light turns green because they're staring at their fucking phone. 
All right, I'm out of time. You guys were awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. You know what's hilarious about sexual assault? <laughs> you know what's hilarious about it? Is how women are acting like that is a uniquely female experience. You know what's funny? I actually, to the letter of the fucking law, within the last two and a half years, got sexually assaulted in this business by a woman. Yeah. And this is my story! <laughs> I feel like I can live my truth and be brave tonight and share this with you. It's 100% true fucking story. I was doing stand-up, I was doing a private gig, all right? Private gigs are the fucking worst. You do a public gig, anybody can show up, it broadens what you can talk about, right? You do a private gig, it's like everybody grew up on the same fucking streets. All your jokes gotta go right down fucking Main Street or you're bombing. So all you do is listen to the first comic to hear what's working and what isn't. You just listen to him as he's up there struggling, going, okay, they like bread, talk about bread. Get all the bread you can. Don't make fun of the troops, stay away from the troops, right? So that's what we're doing, right? And uh, the host gets him going, and then he brings up the first act. Okay, she goes on stage. She's not really a comedian, more of a personality. She does her bullshit or whatever. And I'm standing there, looking at my jokes, figuring out what I'm doing. She wraps it up. He goes on stage. She goes to get off. I'm thinking, okay, I'm next. I'm looking at my stuff. And she just walks right by me and just fucking, poo, just flicked me right in the head of my dick and kept walking. <laughs> like it was nothing. Just fucking pow. and just kept... I couldn't fucking believe it. I know what you're thinking. You're like, oh, is this a friend of yours? Was she flirting with you? Was this a joke? None of the above. You know what it was? I swear to God, it was like a bully vibe. Like she was trying to get in my head. Like, there you go, you little red dick. Poof, follow that. And she just kept walking. Dude, my first thought as I saw her walking away, I just wanted to punch her in the back of the head as hard as humanly possible. Like literally make her leave her shoes, you know? <laughs> But the other side of my brain's like, oh no, dude, you can't do that. You can't do that, it's a woman. And it's just spitball. Well, fucking put her in the ass then. Put her in the ass. Can't hit her, dude. Can't hit her, it's a woman. Well, oh, fucking tell somebody. Tell somebody. And all I'm thinking is like, dude, I'm a guy. You can't fucking tell anybody. Nobody gives a shit what happens to a guy. I'm gonna walk up to another man and be like, excuse me, sir, but she just flicked me in my pee pee and I didn't like that one bit. No, sir, I didn't like that at all. No, I didn't. All the guys gonna be like, dude, if she did that to me, I would've taken my balls out too. Be like, eh, fucking flick both of these fucking sports bar up top, Super Bowl, eh, right? That's all I would've got, right? So now I'm standing there, I'm waiting to go on stage. The dude's doing my intro. I'm trying to think about jokes about bread and the, the tip of my dick is still stinging. This is the world I'm in. And right as he's gonna bring me on, all of a sudden she came walking out because she was gonna go back out to her fucking car. And that's when my brain started firing up again with some ideas. Started thinking shit that I had never thought before in my life. Going like, dude, there she is. There she is. Flick her in the box. <laughs> do it, man. Equal right. She did it to you. You do it back to her. It started making sense. Like, yeah, fuck that. Flick my dick. I'm gonna flick your clit. That's right. I'll fucking hit the man in the boat. I'm gonna drop down. Uppercut to the bush. Fuck this shit. You think I'm the kind of person who just can flick my dick and walk away like it ain't shit, right? And it was making sense till right when she got there, finally I just started thinking of all the sporting events I had watched. And I realized that the referee only sees the retaliation. He never sees the first aggression. And then you, you have to go to the you yellow card, whatever the fuck you people do over here, right? You go to the penalty box. So I let her go and I went out on stage. I did my shit. But here was the thing. For the next three fucking days, I'm driving around LA and I'm just, I'm losing my fucking mind. You know, I'm trying, fucking screaming at the windshield, saying all this shit that I wanted to say but didn't say it in the, in, in the moment, you know? And it wasn't because, I didn't, this is the thing, it wasn't because she touched me, you know what I mean? I don't give a fuck about that, all right? You know, when I was a kid, I had a paper route and I, and I was an altar boy, you know? <laughs> yeah. You're gonna have to do a little bit better than flick my dick over my jeans and my underwear. It's like, are we gonna do this or what? Like, what, what, what is happening here? <laughs> it's the fact that she thought she could bully me. So after like fucking three days of this shit, I had a splitting headache and I started realizing like, wait a minute, she's winning this thing. You know, here I am still thinking about this shit. She's probably gone on to kit like, I don't know, flick 30 to 40 dicks since she's been with me. I ain't just gonna fuck about me. So you know what I did? I drove home to my house. There was nobody home. I went upstairs, I closed the door and I just sat down and I meditated on it and I just forgave her. I just pictured her as a little five-year-old girl crying because her alcoholic dad, you know, wouldn't hug her or something. 
And she's just standing there crying like, but daddy, I love you. He's like, get away from me. I never wanted children. And then he walked through a screen door and he like face planted into this above ground pool. And he had a tool belt on. And he and it just sort of pulled him under. And she ran out, she grabbed his foot and she was pulling and pulling and his boot came off and she sat down and she just watched him slowly drown. <laughs> I don't know what happened after that. I just felt like this weight lift off of my chest. <laughs> so there you go, all you tough guys over here in England. Don't, don't be afraid to meditate, man. I'm telling you. You can let a lot of stuff go. Um, first of all, rest in peace to the amazing, uncomparable uh, Norm MacDonald. But somebody said, when I feel bad and down, I watch Norm Macdonald YouTube clips for hours and it makes me feel better. And dude, I did that yesterday. And I, shame on me for only knowing a handful of them. Every fucking thing that guy did, including when he said to Barbara Walters, Clinton killed a guy. It's the fucking greatest yeah. thing. And they go, no, no, you can't, you can't say that. And he goes, and she goes, Steph, you came here to be funny. And he goes, oh, he goes, I thought it was public record. Dude, just the fucking best, dude. Just the best. And then the ESPYs. Uh -huh. Yeah, my favorite, the ESPYs, is when he goes, and Charles, that's something they could never take away from you, unless you kill your wife and a waiter. In that case, dude, Ken Griffey's face just goes. <laughs> 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 so do yourself a favor, whether you knew all of Norm's stuff, lay in bed when you got nothing to do and go to his YouTube clips because every fucking thing is gold. And the last one I'll say was when he was sitting on the couch next to the blonde actress from, I forgot her name, from Melrose Place. And she goes, yeah, I'm doing a movie with Carrot Top. And, uh, and he was in the seat over. And he goes, you know what they should call that? <laughs> they start laughing. He goes, box office poison, right? And they, start, they just start laughing. And then, oh, did I lose you? Uh, I froze up. You froze oh, up. Yeah. I saw that. I saw that Conan episode live. I watched that. Like I, I don't know. Didn't have a spot or something. And, and I watched it. I, I just was just in awe of it, dude. And then Conan goes. So it's a working title. The movie with uh, Carrot Top. And she goes. No, it's called Chairman of the Board. And he looks at he looks at Norman. He goes. Tried to do something with that, you freak. And then he just waits like two beats and goes. Yeah, the board is spelled B-O-R-E-D, and Conan threw his fucking chair back. The place went nuts, and I was like, dude, the quickness and fucking yeah. brilliance of that guy. So great, man. So great. Truly. And you know why he's cool? He ended up putting that actor in uh, when he did his sitcom. She ended up getting, getting her a job. Because he probably felt bad, because then the movie flopped. Cause he had like a like like it wasn't gonna anyway you know what are you gonna do, but dude as far as like people to go down a rabbit hole, for me it's him Norm Macdonald Rick Flair, uh, Patrice. There's like three of them you could just kind of go down, and it's just so different and great and fresh and unique. And I thought there was a lot of similarity in. Uh, as far as what they did, Patrice and Norm, I thought there was a lot of similarity. It's it's brutal, dude. That guy was just uh, just one of the. He's such a nice guy too. He's such a nice guy, and, and just I thought just so mentally beyond. Yeah, all of us, and that um, I don't know. I kind of felt like he just sort of like that smile on his face was him just enjoying just. The, you know, you, once you get past the depression of observing humanity, if you can somehow get into that lightened thing to just be like, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I'll just sort of enjoy it. Like, I don't know. I, I, I don't There's no way. I, you know, the hardest thing yesterday was trying to put a tweet out about this. It's like, how the fuck do you sum up a guy of that talent in a tweet? Yeah. You know? Well, I, I, I actually, like, yesterday after I heard it and I was sad, I never had the pleasure to meet the man, but I can tell you, uh, I got really happy watching his stuff and time went by really fast. I just was watching clips and then I'm showing my wife clips and we're just laughing. And it was just like, I mean, beyond brilliant and beyond. And I, yeah, you could kind of see behind a smile that there's more going on there. But dude, his gambling was hilarious. His tweet, he would tweet out a fucking golf tournament, everything that happened. 
literally he would go tiger's coming up on the second he's got second shot and then he would go tiger missed that second shot he's coming up and he would just and you think it would be over and he would just keep doing it um just so fucking great man but dude when barbara walters when he goes i just want no homicide in the white house let's get rid of that and they're going like what do you mean what are you talking about he goes oh clinton killed a guy dude it's like and 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 they fucking freaked out dude Dude, Barbara Walters freaked out, and Joy Bayer was just looking, trying to smile. Yeah, because she knew she was worried about libel and slander. Like, you can't do that on TV. I don't want to be famous. I get a little bit anxious when you're looking at me. And isn't it obvious? You know I'm going to do shit. I'm stubborn as the calm. I'm stopping till I but he can do it because he's a comedian and bill clinton's a public figure i think it's a weird you know kind of thing but she had never dealt with somebody like him he said oh clinton killed a guy like he was telling her for the first time which was so great and they just fucking freaked out but uh, anyway rest in peace to one of the greats watch his clips and it's uh it's a big blow you could feel it you could he's one of those you could feel so uh um, yeah no that was that was the uh yeah it was that was a that was a big one and i gotta tell you you need guys I just don't know. Why can't somebody who's a fucking... I don't want to wish that on anybody, but one of these cancel culture people, just, you know, comedian that tries to take out other comedians Ugh. every five... I mean, what? I mean, the fact that there's fucking comics out there doing that to other comics, uh, talking about events where they weren't even there. I know. And they're literally getting this information as I'm getting it, and they just comment on it and try and help take this a person out when it's you weren't even there. Why would you comment one way or the other? Yeah, it's it's And then you present yourself as like the hero and this champion and all of that fucking shit. Oh. And there's a couple of them for I swear to God, I swear to God. They're worse than the fucking people they're going after. And I'll leave it at that. Does your wife watch any of these games with you? Does she no, she has the female complex <laughs> multitasking brain. That's why they can't be happy. They they're just <laughs> They just always, they're like, what is that lizard that can look at two things at once? That's what they're like. So they got the shoes they want, and then they see some other woman walking in going, oh, look at this skinny bitch over here. Women are so overrated, right? We, we went from Wait, not, wait, what? We wait, went, wait, what? We what? went, wait, we went, what? We went from not listening to them to now it's just, it's just, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Like that believe women, it's like all of them. Oh God! You know what makes women happy? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes them happy, and that is why they have slowly taken over the NFL because it annoys them that that we can just sit there with like a pizza and a drink, like eh, that's not holding, and just just be like and enjoy ourselves. I saw a woman a couple months back, professional soccer player, right? She goes on to ESPN or one of these sports channels, going like, I don't understand. How come female athletes? Don't make as much as male professional athletes, right? And all of these men had to sit there and act like they didn't know what the answer was. <laughs> they had to sit there like dumbfounded, like, oh, I don't know, I don't know. Uh, why is that? Uh, that is a conundrum. I have, I have no idea. Literally, I'm sitting at home screaming at the TV because you don't sell any fucking tickets! And they say, being a mother is the hardest job out Most there. Most difficult job Most in difficult. the... Oprah said that. Oprah said that, yeah. Has, yeah. That, has your opinion on that, on that phrase, changed at all since, since no. you've had a kid? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's not the most difficult job on the planet. It just isn't. <laughs> Dude, I did roofing in July. I almost, as a redhead, I almost died. There's people, there's people that work on like oil. What was that movie that guy made? The oil deal, the fucking, you know, they drove oil. 
What is it? There will be blood. With Not the... there will be blood. The uh, out in the ocean they would drill. I can never remember the names. Deepwater. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, was Deepwater there. Horizon. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Those guys were working on on an oil rig. The fucking thing blows up. <laughs> They're on fire. They got to jump into water that's on fire. Salty water into their wounds. You got to swim out of that oil and fire and then tread water. Praying to God that the Coast Guard is going to get there before the sharks do. Now talk to me about a toddler. Oh, he was so fussy today. I just, he wouldn't eat his peas. Yeah, and just the level of reward that is, you know, as annoying as a kid is, like, they smile at you and it's over. It's over. So, I mean, you, you don't get that, you know, working on an oil rig when your buddy's greasy face lights up. <laughs> yeah, you know what? It really is all worth it. No, no, no. I have this. That's, that's all my ink. I have this uh, mic on, so. Yeah, that's all right. Be a gentleman and help me off my clothes. <laughs> hey! didn't work out? <laughs> yeah, I can't believe your relationships don't work out. <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Feminism doesn't bug me, you know? It doesn't bother me. I'm not afraid of it or anything like that. You know, for the simple fact that I know it's gonna fail, you know? And I, I take comfort in that. I do. I'm not rooting for it because I know it doesn't like me. Um, yeah. Do you know why, you know why I think it's not going to survive? I mean, why it's not going to be successful anyways? Because they still need men's help to make it happen. I don't understand it. I don't understand why women just can't work with each other and make this shit happen. They keep coming to us like, you more men need to care about this issue. Where are the men to stand up and say something? Like, why do I have to fucking say something? This is your problem. Why are you always dragging us into this shit? I, I, you know, I love women and everything. I'm just finding I'm not, like, compatible with them. You know what I mean? You ever just feel that? Like, women have, like, too much energy for me. You know what I mean? Like, you can't have a day off when you have a girlfriend. You ever notice that? It's almost like they see that open day. They're like, oh, my God, let's go fill it up with shit. No, then they just come at you with one horrible idea after another. Horrible ideas. Like, you want to make some sandwiches and go to the park? You want to go to the container store, get some containers for your t-shirts? This is the worst one. Ever get this one? You want to go to brunch? You want to go to brunch on Sunday? And inside you're like, fucking no! You can't say that, right? You gotta keep them happy. So what do you do? You agree. Like, yeah, let's go to brunch. What a great idea. Why would you want to sleep in on a Sunday when you can go pay $18 for eggs? Now nah, you're thinking. Now nah, you're thinking. Then we can sit around and listen to your friends have moronic conversations about the eggs. Like, is that pesto? Is that pesto in your omelet? Oh, it's asparagus. It's asparagus! I thought it was pesto! Oh, you just want to flip the whole fucking table over? Because every time we fight, as I'm driving home, I get a text from you that says, you know I love you, right? And I go, yeah, I love you that, too. That isn't me. <laughs> I've, never, I've never said, you know I... Are you, you fucking I, serious? Well, my memory isn't good, but oh. I don't remember doing that. I'll show you. I, what are you say? I them? can't believe you're... No, texts just exist. <laughs> yeah, I, I press save on my text. What kind of phone do you have? No, I, I like delete them after a while. What are you saving it for? You delete texts? Yeah. Oh, I never do because all our friends die and then it's all you have left. <laughs> <laughs> How many have you had? Die? I'm up, I count I have a huge day. list. I'm I, 30. Keep... 30. Yeah. Get something funny out of that. <laughs> That's what you do. I'm not good at that. I'm not good in the mom. All right. I do like you. And I just, I always feel like you're frustrated with me. I fucking love you. Look at my Sometimes posture saying, right now. I'm like, I'm I as far over into this chair as I can possibly be. I just I'm feel like I kind of came here to hang out and have a good time. And you're just like, 
Like that intro was just like, yeah. It was I just thought so, you'd like that. I fucking hate this guy. He's a douchebag, but he came down here. I mean, that's how I heard it. No means no. That's another one. No means no. It's like, no, it doesn't. All right? Look, look, no means no. No, that means no. All right, but no, stop it. What are you doing? Oh my God. You're being so bad. Stop it. No. Yeah, that's not a fucking no. That means I want to do it, but I'm afraid you're going to judge me. So I'm just going to make it look like it was your idea so you don't figure out that I've already performed this act with 40 other fucking people. Right? But then, then you go to court and you get a bad read and there's some guy reading it. Oh, your Honor, she said no. Stop it. What are you doing? You're being so bad. Yeah, and you just sit me like, she didn't fucking say it like that. She didn't say it like that. So let's talk, uh, let's talk white women here, shall we? Let's talk white women. White women, you're amazing. Amazing your accomplishments over the last few years. I got to tell you, the way white women somehow hijack the woke movement, generals around the world should be analyzing this. Just to refresh your memory, the woke movement was supposed to be about people of color not getting opportunities, the at-bats that they deserved, finally making that happen. And it was about that for about eight seconds. And then somehow, white women swung their Gucci-booted feet over the fence of oppression and stuck themselves at the front of the line. I don't know how they did it. I've never heard so much complaining in my life from white women. My name is so hard eh, with my SUV and my heated seats. You have no idea what it's like to be me. Trash and white guys, the nerve. Where's the camera? The nerve of you white women. Let me, I, listen, I don't want to speak ill on my bitches here, okay? I don't, but let's, let's go back in history here, okay? You guys stood by us toxic white males through centuries of our crimes against humanity. You rolled around in the blood muddy, and occasionally when you wanted to sneak off and hook up with the black dude, if you got caught, you said it wasn't consensual. Yeah, that's what you did. That's what you did. So why don't you shut up, sit down next to me, and take your talking to. <laughs> Well, this is what my girlfriend did one night when I was driving home. This is how much they manipulate, or as I call it, lie, to get what they want. I was driving home, and I was looking at this fucking, there was this diner. And I was driving home, and it was late at night. I was like, you know, hey, you know, I'm going to stop there. I'm going to get one of those milkshakes. And you were just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, hate, I hate when you do that generic female voice. Fuck you. It's hilarious. Uh, Let's not forget at the end of the day, my job is to like make those people laugh. Okay, Nia, you don't understand. These people work hard all week. These were Americans. <laughs> they need to come out and forget about their problems. No, whatever. I, I don't have, what am I, Mel Blanc? I got one fucking voice. Mel I do. Blank. Nice, uh, nice reference. Yeah, I watch nice cartoons. Impressed. Really? Very is that all it takes to impress you on a first date? That's how you ended up with me. He knows who does the voice of Bugs Bunny. This guy's a keeper. I think this guy will be able to provide. Have you ever told that story? What? The first night that we ever were like hung out. When I hooked up? We'll save that for another one. Okay. But you got you to gotta tell me, huh? Hmm? You had to be impressed with my skills. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. You see that? They just won't <laughs> give it up. This guy was fucking cock blocking me on an Olympic level. He saw I was going to hook up. He actually tried to split a cab with you. Yeah, I know. On the way home, and I got around that. Yeah. Got around that. What happened? I fucking put the cards. I went all in, just like World Series of Poker. I went all fucking in. She, she was trying to be all coy with the little Sammy Davis Jr. hat on, trying to play all hard to get. Huh? Thinking you were dealing with the sophomore in fucking college. Like, I didn't have any fucking lines. All right, all right. Yeah. And that douchebag kept coming over, cock blocking me. He invited. We were, we were all set. I was hanging out. I'm going to tell right now. We were hanging out, right? Me and this other dude. And all of a sudden, Nia shows up, right? And I can, I can see the vibe. I see the look on her face. I know she wants it. No. I, I don't know. I just, you know. And we had met before. So. Shut up. You look great. You came up. You had a nice big smile. And you're being flirtatious. And I immediately liked you, right? So you went to the bathroom. You're with a friend. I'm with a friend. 
Every guy knows what you're supposed to do. Take that fucking battle axe out of the picture. <laughs> okay? Take one for the team. I can't remember who the fuck you're with, so if it's one of your friends, I apologize. Yeah, not a battle axe. Um, whatever. All right. A uh, war memorial. Um, so what is this fucking – he goes the opposite route. I said, you went to the bathroom. I said, listen, I'm really doing well with this girl, all right? So, uh, dude, he, he, I, I had to like – he was like a be chick. Your, be your, be your wingman, is what no, I had to be like, so if I'm not paying attention to you, don't get upset. This is how like female this dude was, right? So I fucking – this is what he ends up doing, okay? The fucking guy ends up – as we're going to leave, you know, I'm thinking, okay, he's going to try to peel off with uh, your girl who's not a battle axe. And he just goes – he invites another dude over and goes, hey, you guys all want to get something to eat? Remember? Yeah. And yeah. member, and he invited us over. Now we're sitting there. It's me, you, your not so battle axe friends, and three other fucking <laughs> cocks are sitting there. And I'm trying to hit on you. Yeah. And he keeps jumping in. And then he goes, Hey, Nia, where do you live? Oh, I live up that way. You want to split a cab? Right. Remember that? Yeah, I do. And I had to be like, No. No, no, you didn't. It was over at that point. I had, I made the move. Remember that? I said, Are you at least, I, but before he fucking said that shit, he was doing everything. I remember I didn't have any cash, and I pulled out my credit card. I said, you guys just give me the cash or just put it on my credit card. And he goes, oh, he's just trying to get the miles. Remember that? Anything at Duke to make me look like a shithead. I paid for the whole thing. I thought you were like, bam, I'm paying for the whole meal. No. No, no, everyone gave me money. No, no, they gave me money because I didn't have any cash. You paid for mine. This is how I got you. But you were sitting there and I said, look, are we at least going to be able to split a cab? Because I wanted to go over and have a drink with you. Right. And I was like, at least we'll be able to split a cab. And then you're like, why? Why do you want to split a cab? (laughs) Just putting up the roadblock. And that's when I went all in. I said, because I want to kiss you. Bam. Right. Yeah. And then that was it. I didn't fucking talk to you after that. Yeah. Yeah, you sat there with that little stunned look on your face. Then what happened? Then we walked you outside. Really then, like then, then, then we walked out. That was the shit. That was one of the greatest. I, I used to, the fucking guys like that used to always get me. I fucking nailed that. Stuck the landing. Like a male Mary Lou Retton. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what the best part was? Then I stood up, we all, and, I, and at that point I was like, fuck it. I said what I wanted to do. Mm-hmm. All the shit is in. I don't need to talk to her anymore. And I sort of peeled off, right? Mm-hmm. And then everybody got up to leave. And then you kind of tugged me on the shoulder and said, don't worry. She goes, you said, like, don't worry, we're going to split a cab up time. And then I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Because now I'm in and now I'm going to get to watch that little fucking cock block get his balls knocked on the, on, the, on the fucking sidewalk. And that's what happened. He came out, right? He clapped his hands. Remember that? Came out just like this. He was just like, so, you guys ready to go? Yeah. And you were like, uh, yeah, actually, we're taking a cab. And he was, and he was so in cock block mode, he still didn't know. He's like, no, I, I live right near you. Yeah. And you were like, listen, we're taking a cab, <laughs> and we're going uptown. And you leaned over, and you said it. And then that's when he realized that everyone realized he was a cock blocking douche. And then what did he do? He goes, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. And he just fucking peeled off. Yeah. Huh? Then what happened? My, my other fucking classic line? Boy, I fucking reeled you in was a masterpiece. Fucking masterpiece. Then we got in the cab and you said, I thought I thought you were going to kiss me. And we yeah. fucking drive it like a maniac. And I go, I can't. The, the cab's jumping around too much. I go, I'll kiss you at the first red light. You're just really trying to like right? drag it out. You were trying to make this whole like... I was fucking seducing you and it worked. <laughs> right? Then we hit the fucking red light. Yeah. I put one on you. you Bam. Right? Couldn't feel your fucking feet. <laughs> I'm going to make this story last nine hours long. And then you know what happened? Then I sat back and I was playing Mr. Fucking Cool again like I'm fucking Walt Frazier in 1972. Oh, the callback to the Knicks from an hour ago, right? Then what happened? We stopped again and I'm sitting there looking out the window and you go, it's another red light, right? And then we, and then. And then we heard that cheesy saxophone from every fucking sexy movie in the 80s. <laughs> right? And then you were going, I'm not going home with you. I'm not going home with you. Now, whenever they say that, guys, you know they're not going home with you. You know that shit. So what you have to do is you have to constantly make them feel like it's safe and they're in control. So before, actually, before you said you weren't going home with me, I felt your vibe. I knew the deal. So I just said, listen. I know we're not going home together, but I'm really having a good time with you. I'd like to have another drink with you. All right? I know a nice bar. Ba 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 ba, and bam. Right? And I did not go home with you. You didn't go home with me. We had like fucking eight more drinks yeah. and made out for like the next five hours. 
in that fucking Hell's Kitchen bar. Had a great time. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So there's a little story, people. There's your little 